Coming to you live from the UTPA Fieldhouse in the three-time All-American City of Edinburgh, this is Bronx Basketball. Today, the Bronx take on the Duquesne University Dukes. Bronx playing their first game in 11 days, thanks to winter break. It's the first ever meeting between these two teams, between the Bronx and the Dukes. Uh, here at the Fieldhouse, the Bronx coming in with a little bit of a skid, still looking for their first win of December, having lost their last five after a 4-4 four and four start, but you know, playing a very tough schedule. They're coming off of games at TCU, at SMU. They started this streak at Bradley. So you know, you're playing a lot of tough competition, and it doesn't get any easier today. But the idea is you play tough competition going into conference play, and then that helps you to get ready and to get better uh, at the start of the conference season. Duquesne, they come in at 500. They're 5-5, five and five, but they've won their last two, beating UMass Lowell eight days ago, and then St. Francis in Pennsylvania right before that. They played some tough competition at West Virginia and, and then against Pittsburgh as well and lost both of those games as they play, like the Bronx, their second to last non-conference game of the season. Duquesne from the A-10, the Atlantic 10, one, one of the top mid-major conferences in America, so it should be a very interesting matchup uh, between these two clubs who have never seen each other before. Let's take a time out. Coming up on Bronx pregame, it's Coach's Corner. Chat with Bronx head coach Dan Hipshire. This is Bronx Basketball. Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim your Red Tax cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best. Well, Coach, you had a little bit of time off for winter break, and you know, now you come back. Well, what do you start to work on coming right out of the break? 
Well, just get their legs back under them a little bit. Uh, we told them all to work out some, you know, with without uh, taking jeopardy of getting hurt. So, you know, told them to do a little running and shooting when they were home. But they came back with good spirit yesterday. We we got a lot of shooting in and uh, a lot of running. And then today we had another shooting, shooting session this morning, and we'll come back this afternoon then with a competitive session and uh, preparing for Duquesne. Do you think uh, the the rest after you know, a lot of road games and really tough schedule helps a little bit? No doubt about it. I think especially for the freshmen, sometimes they're just kind of wearing down a little bit. You know, they're almost uh, you know two thirds of the way what would be a high school season in terms of the amount of practice and work they've put in. So I, I think they get a little bounce back and everybody comes back with a little fresher mind. But as I told them now, you know, we've kind of had our learning period. Now the, the real season starts with conference play coming up. So uh, let's come back with the right mindset. What can you tell us about Duquesne? Very, very strong offensive team. I averaged nearly 80 points a game. Got a couple good post players uh, in there. The one senior, Soko, is averaging 17 points and eight rebounds a game. And uh, uh, very, very effective offensive team that, that has struggled on the defensive end at times. And uh, hopefully we can get them slowed down and take advantage of some of the, the issues that they've had defensively. Well, Coach, you had a a little bit of time off for winter break, and you know, now you come back. Well, what do you start to work on coming right out of the break? Well, just get their legs back under them a little bit. Uh, we told them all to work out some, you know, with without uh, taking jeopardy of getting hurt. So, you know, told them to do a little running and shooting when they were home. But they came back with good spirit yesterday. We we got a lot of shooting in and uh, a lot of running. And then today we had another shooting shooting session this morning, and we'll come back this afternoon then with a competitive session and uh, preparing for Duquesne. Do you think uh, the the rest after you know, a lot of road games and really tough schedule helps a little bit? No doubt about it. I think especially for the freshmen, sometimes they're just kind of wearing down a little bit. You know, they're almost uh, you know two thirds of the way what would be a high school season in terms of the amount of practice and work they've put in. So I, I think they get a little bounce back, and everybody comes back with a little fresher mind. But as I told them now, you know, we've kind of had our learning period. Now the, the real season starts with conference play coming up. So uh, let's come back with the right mindset. What can you tell us about Duquesne? Very, very strong offensive team. I averaged nearly 80 points a game. Got a couple good post players uh, in there. The one senior, Soko, is averaging 17 points and eight rebounds a game. And uh, uh, very, very effective offensive team that, that has struggled on the defensive end at times. And uh, hopefully we can get them slowed down and take advantage of some of the, the issues that they've had defensively. Okay. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the Big Dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines at UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference.
Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital at Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you as we get ready for the start of today's game between the UTPA Bronx and the Duquesne University Dukes. They're going through the starting lineup, so we're going to do the same. And we'll start with the visiting Dukes. Starting in the backcourt, a 5'11 sophomore out of Fortsville, Maryland, Number one, Derek Coulter. And a 6'2 sophomore out of Natrona Heights, Pennsylvania. Number 22, Micah Mason. Up front, a 6'8 senior. Out of London, England, number zero, Ovi Soko. A 6'8 junior out of Atlanta, Georgia. Number three, Dominic McCoy. And a 6'3 sophomore out of Gary, Indiana. Number 23, Jeremiah Jones. Head coach of the Dukes in his second season is Jim Ferry. The associate head coach is Brian Nash. The assistant coaches are John Rhodes and Rich Glessman. For the Dukes enter this game with a record of five and five. They've won two in a row, two and one on the road this season. This is the back end of a three game road trip for the Dukes of the A-10. As for those hosts, UTPA Bronx, little change to the starting lineup today. Starting at the point guard position, a 6'5", 215-pound graduate student out of Woodbridge, Virginia, number three, Javon Farrell. At shooting guard, a 6'1", 185-pound senior out of Clewiston, Florida, number 30, Hurley Johnson. At small forward, a 6'7", 195-pound sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois, number 24, Shaquille Hines. At power forward, a 6'5", 218-pound junior out of Kansas City, Missouri, number 32, Justin Leathers. And at center, a 6'6", 225-pound senior out of Houston, number 25, Josh Cleveland. The head coach of the Bronx in his first season is Mr. Dan Hipshire. The associate head coach is Andy Hipshire. Assistant coaches are Ellen McCroy and Cody Hopkins. The Bronx enter this game with a record of 4-9. and nine. They've lost five in a row. Sitting at one and three at home this season. This is their first home game in 22 days and just their second since November 13th. Schedule's gonna even out a little bit after this. As of the Bronx. This starts a stretch of 18 games left. Nine at home, nine on the road. So everything starts to become a little easier in terms of how much travel there is. Of course, I say that, but there's 16,000 miles of travel coming up in the WAC.
Strongs are in their home white tops and bottoms with green numbers on the front and on the back. Orange trim, Duquesne in the navy blue tops and bottoms. It says Duquesne on the front in white. The maroon trim, numbers on the front and on the back, last names on the back. Duquesne wins the tip, and we are underway. Moving from left to right across your computer screen. Three ball up from the right corner. It's good for Derek Coulter and Duquesne. Takes a quick three to nothing lead. Bronx basketball on the left side of your screen. Cheerleaders start the go, Bronx go chant. Ball down low, looking for Farrell. It's poked away and taken away by Duquesne. Back we go the other way. Ball in the corner, now comes out to the left wing. That's Soko, now into the left corner. Right. It's Jones who misses on the triple and a rebound, Bronx. Hines right wing, pass left wing, Johnson. Back to Farrell at the top. Lobs it in for Hines. Turn around, jumper from the foul line, bounces around, doesn't fall. Rebound pulled in by Jones, back we go the other way. Coulter races it in. Ball cycles around, comes back to Jones. Leaves it back for McCoy, takes the long deuce, doesn't go. Offensive rebound, comes to Jones, Duquesne retains. Over to Coulter. Up the right wing, Jones. Jones comes inside, throws it up with the left hand. Good in the foul. Shaquille Hines picks up the first foul of the game. Jones trying to convert on three point play. It bounces off the front iron, doesn't go in. And on the rebound, a whistle on Dominique McCoy. And it's Bronx basketball. Minute and a half gone by, five to nothing Duquesne. First ever trip to Edinburgh for the Dukes. Johnson bounces in underneath the basket, travels, and it's Dukes basketball. Chance of defense coming from behind. Coulter walks it up the court. Johnson sticks with him, moves over to the right, now pass up top to Soko. Soko steps in, pushes Leathers away for space. The jumper doesn't go, the rebound Leathers. Here come the Bronx. Farrell going straight to the hoop, throws it up, off the window and in. Yeah, the Bronx on the board, it's five to two. And then Soko responds with a three. Eight to two, Dukes. Leathers finds Hines on the left wing. Up top to Farrell, steps in, dumps it underneath, and Hines throws it over his shoulder and into the basket. Bronx within four. Soko, the fall away right baseline, doesn't go in. Offensive board and a bucket for McCoy. 10 to four, Duquesne. Duquesne four for eight from the field. And a steal. Jones takes it himself. 12 to four, Duquesne. Coach Hipsher motions to the bench. Three players getting ready to check in as Hines buries the triple from the left wing. It's 12-7, Duquesne. It's Lori Toivin in. Alex Majewski and Jacob Raspopovich wait at the scorer's table. Mason steps in, Mason goes to the hoop, and his shot is swatted away by Hines. Still Duke's ball. Shot clock really will be at. Twenty. 
subs in. Johnson, Leathers, and Cleveland take a seat. So it's Farrell, Hines, Majewski, Toivonen, and Raspopovich. Officials are discussing how much time should be on the shot clock. It shows 20, and now they're asking for 30. Of course, both of these teams have been running pretty quick offense, so <laughs> Selko travels. So 20 or 30 wouldn't have mattered. It's a quick turnover, and it's Bronx ball. You know what? With the basket, the Bronx can get within a possession here. Fans still filing in at the UTPA Fieldhouse. Mostly sitting behind me. Farrell, left wing for three. Rattles out. Rebound Dukes. Quick trigger three for Mason. Doesn't fall. Raspopovich the rebound. Here come the Bronx. Fires it ahead, left wing for Hines. Hits another three. Two threes for Shaq Hines. The Bronx are within two. It's 12 to 10. We saw a couple of former Bronx. Well, you're always a Bronx. Former student athletes of the Bronx walk in. Jared Marie graduated two years ago. Brandon Provost graduated last year. High bank for Coulter. And it's 14 10 Duquesne. Hines fires it out to Farrell on the left wing. Right wing, Hines, another three. This one too strong. Rebound, Dukes. Jones looked like he might have tripped over Farrell and just throws the ball wildly in the air, and the Bronx get it down. Or Spopovich leaves it off for Farrell, tried to be behind the back pass, and he ran into the brick wall of Micah Mason. Whistle's blown. We hit immediate timeout after an offensive foul. 14.49 to play in the opening half. The Bronx are down 14.10. You're watching Bronx Basketball. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put them somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Rolito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Got to make room. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim your Red Tax cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Joe Goldberg riding with you. 14.49 to play in the opening half. Bronx find themselves down 14.10 to Duquesne. Bronx shooting the ball pretty well. Four of seven from the field. 57%, two of four from behind the arc. Duquesne's gotten a few more possessions because of small offensive rebounds and a steal, or two steals actually. So they're 6 of 13, and also 2 of 4 from behind the arc. And 
Higher volume, but the Bronx with a better percentage. Shaq Hines, eight of the Bronx, 10 points today. Duquesne ball off the timeout. Christian Hildebrandt's in for UTPA. Hines is on the bench. Travel, and it's Bronx ball. So it's Hildebrandt, Majewski, Toivonen, Raspopovich, and Farrell for the Bronx. Raspopovich running the offense. Basket, and the Bronx can be within a possession again. Hildebrandt at the top. It's off to Farrell. From the top, a long two. Rolls out. And the rebound, Coulter. Here come the Dukes. Three comes up from the left corner, doesn't fall. Long rebound pulled in by Farrell. That's the right wing, Majewski. Now the right corner, Hildebrand for three. Short. Rebound pulled in by Travon White in off the timeout. Leaves it back for Coulter, right wing. Back to White. Right side, a long three, and it doesn't go. Rebound Jones underneath. He's being doubled by Majewski and Toivon in. And Somehow he avoids the travel and passes it out to Coulter, who fires it up from the foul line, misses the rim entirely, but it's tapped away by Isaiah Watkins and comes back out, and now apparently the shot clock reset at some point. Because I see 31, it shouldn't have. It missed the rim. They'll just have to figure out how much time should be on it. They're going to go with 21. Jones inbounds to Coulter. The top to Jones. Farrell pokes it away, whereas Popovich picks it up, and then Jones commits the blocking foul. Personal foul is on number 23, Jeremiah Jones. 14-10 Duquesne, 13-21 to play in the first. Josh Cleveland's back in. Lori Toivonen takes a seat. Shaq Hines is in. He replaces Alex Majewski. There's Popovich runs the offense. Bounce over to Hines. Right wing Farrell for three. Got it! Javon Farrell from downtown. The Bronx are within one. It's 14-13. Seven minutes gone by in the first. A lot of quick touch passes for Duquesne. White shot misses. And They blow the whistle off screen from the call. Let's see. Well, they're calling a foul. <laughs> on Cleveland. That makes three on the Bronx, one on Cleveland. Jones and Coulter out. The other Jones, or Jerry Jones, in for Duquesne. First shot for White, no good. Also in his Desmond... Ridenauer. White from the line this season, 69% shooter. Has a team, Duquesne, 68%. Second shot good, it's 15-13. Bronx can tie it or take the lead on this possession. Hildebrand at the top, gets the Farrell to his left. Top of the key to Hines. Hines throws up the jumper, and it goes. Jack Hines has 10. And the Bronx have tied the game at 15. Jones goes right corner, White. Bronx 2-3 zone. Jumper doesn't go. Hildebrand and Watkins battling for the rebound. Jump ball situation, possession arrow favors the Bronx. Justin Leathers in, Christian Hildebrand out. Well now with the basket, the Bronx can take their first lead of the game. Duquesne scored the first five points they've led ever since, except for now when it's tied to 15 for the first time. Barrel for the lead. 
short. Rebound by McCoy. Jones is down low and coming the other way. Watkins whistled for the foul, and it's Bronx ball when we return. 11.41 to play. We're tied to 15. This is Bronx basketball. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the Big Dance. To see who will go home, the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines of UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. John Goldberg riding with you, 11.41 to play. In the opening half, game tied at 15. Shaq Hines with 10, Javon Barrow with 5, and that makes up all the Bronx points. Bronx were down by 8, it was 12 to 4. Since then on an 11 to 3 run. Trying to take their first lead of the game. Urs Popovich beats Farrell at the top. Urs Popovich left wing. Comes in, his pass looking for Hines out of his reach and out of bounds. It is Duquesne basketball. Bronx won it. I, it. Hines jumped up for it. I thought he tipped it, but I guess it hit off of a Duquesne hand after Hines touched it. And reverse it. It remains Bronx ball with 14 on the shot clock. Hines inbounds left corner, Farrell. Quick whistle and a foul. Hines looking at inbound stage right of the basket. Feeds Farrell on the left wing. That's out to Hines. Back to Farrell. Left wing versus Popovich. Pass to Hines. It's off his fingertips. It's stolen by Duquesne. Quick layup. It's good. Desmond Reidenauer puts the Dukes back on top. It's 17-15. Leathers left wing, finds Hines. Jumper from the foul line, bounces, doesn't go. Rebound Soko. Head to right an hour. Left wing, Johnson. Misses on the three, a rebound, Raspovich. Bronx are pushing. 
to Farrell on the right wing. Now to Hines in the right corner. In front of the decaying bench. Back to Farrell. Up top to Leathers. Dumps it in for Cleveland, who would have hit a hook, but calling a foul on the floor. McCoy has two fouls now. Duquesne's got five. Early Johnson in. Jacob Raspopovich out. Duquesne's had six different players score today. By Coulter with five. They've mixed and matched early. Hines, left wing, long two, doesn't go. Rebound, Redenauer. Right wing, Gill for three, no good. Rebound, Hines. Second rebound for Hines. Leathers, right wing, Farrell, thought about it. Comes in for Hines. Out to Farrell. Offensive foul against Josh Cleveland. So Laurie Toivonen is going to come in for the Bronx. Cleveland back to the bench. Derek Coulter's back in for Duquesne. Coulter, two of three from the field today. Coulter. Over to Jones. Passes the corner down low there. Soko. Count the basket and the foul. Game is back into two possessions. Check that. So Soko tries to convert on the three point play. And he does. So it's 20 to 15, Duquesne. Jeremiah Jones replaces Jerry Jones. Hines. Johnson, Farrell, back to Hines. Ball inside, knocked away by Soko. Here comes, Far Here comes Soko straight to the basket and he lays it in. 22-15, and the Bronx call for time out. Down by seven. They had been down by as many as eight, came back to tie it. But Duquesne has scored the last seven points. Take a quick look over on the women's side. UTBA women's basketball is up at 11th-ranked Oklahoma State. And they're at the 11-27 mark of the first half. The Bronx are down 14-7. Here it's 22-15, Duquesne. All the Bronx points coming from Shaq Hines, who is 10, Javon Farrell, who is 5. Hines has become a nice scoring option for the Bronx this season. The only one the Bronx was scoring once, that was at TCU. Out of bounds. Duquesne loses it out of bounds, the Bronx ball. But Hines has been in double figures nine times in 13 games. And he's certainly been a rebounding presence, leading the Bronx in rebounding six times. Ranks third in the WAC and offensive boards, 10th in overall boards. Eight forty-seven to go. Bronx down seven. L.J. McIntosh in for the first time today. McIntosh, Farrell, Toivonen, Hines, and Majewski the five for UTPA.
Hines out to Toyvin, right corner, McIntosh for three, too strong. It misses the rim, it's a shot clock violation. It's Duquesne ball. For Duquesne right now, it's Soko, Coulter, Mason, Jones, and Gill. It's Jeremiah Jones. Jones with the basketball right wing. Cycles it around to Coulter, left wing for three, no good. Rebound Toivonen. Back we go the other way. Farrell and McIntosh, touch pass, Hines left wing. Gives it back for Farrell, now the right wing, Majewski. Out to Farrell, left wing, McIntosh, over the baseline, Hines. Fires it out to, to Farrell. Down low, Toivonen throws it up, round it in. Runs back on the board, it's 22-17. Soko over to Coulter. Right corner, Jones along the baseline. His shot doesn't go. Rebound is saved from going out by Mason. Duquesne retains. Coulter comes inside, feeds Mason. Left corner open for three. Swish. 25-17. Duquesne matches their largest lead of the game at eight. Farrell, left corner, Hines. Top to Farrell. Steps in, feeds Majewski on the right wing. Back to Farrell, wanted to shoot it, instead tried to pass it, and it gets stolen by Coulter. Farrell steals it away into the hands of Hines. He's coming in three on two, puts it up, no good but a foul. Hines to the line when we return. 6.54 to play in the opening half, and the Bronx are down 25-17. You're watching. Bronx basketball. Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim your Red Tax cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best. Back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. 6.54 to play in the opening half. And the Bronx find themselves down 25 to 17. Duquesne on a 10-2 run over the last five minutes. Shaq Hines at the line. Trying to break that run, he's shooting two. First trip to the line today, and first one's off the back iron. Hines is a 57% free throw shooter this season. He's six, Bronx 66% overall. First time any Bronx has been to the line. Duquesne had been two for four, and now the Bronx are 0 for two. Coulter on the right wing. 
Pass comes to the right corner. Mason buries another three. And it's 28-17. The game in double figures for the first time today. Spopovich at the top. Toivonen. His pass intercepted. Jerry Jones. Gets to Mason. Puts it up. Banks it in. Gets a foul. But Mason. That's two, two new fashion threes. Is now going to go for the old fashioned three if he can hit this free throw. Mason, six of seven from the line this season. Coulter out, white in for Duquesne. Doesn't go. So 30 17 Duquesne. There's Popovich. Farrell on the right wing. The Hines right corner. Back to Farrell. Up top to Majewski for three. Off the front iron. And the rebound is off the hand of White and out of bounds. It's Bronx ball. 5.55 to play in the first. Make a wish. Bronx down 30 17. Inbounds comes to Farrell. He's a marked man today. Looks for the layup, doesn't fall. Rebound Watkins. That's Jones, puts it up, good in the foul. Jones hits the free throw. It's 33 to 17. And it's now a 17 to two run. Uh, Jack Hines, who else breaks it just as quickly? And it'll go to the line, try and convert on three point play. During that 17-2 run, it lasted seven minutes. Check that. It was an 18-2 run over seven minutes. Duquesne was 7-11 from the field. The Bronx were one for five. Off the front iron. Rebound by Selko. So 33-19. Off the window and in for White. 35-19. Carroll brings it up for the Bronx. Up corner Hines. Down low for Toivonen. Out of his fingertips grabbed by White from the floor. And he passes it up to Jones. Down low to Soko. Misses the basket but gets fouled. Heads to the line for two free throws. Hines just picked up his second foul. Ian Cleveland both with two for the Bronx. McCoy and Watkins with two for Duquesne. Hines leads all scorers with 12 points. Five of nine shooting, two of three from behind the arc. Soko hits the first free throw. Second shot good. 37-19 to Kane. Justin Leathers replaces Alex Majewski. Christian Hildebrand replaces Shaq Hines. Five minutes left in the first. Johnson. Foul. Personal foul is on number zero, Obi Soko. 
Ovi Soko picks up his first foul. That's eight on Duquesne, so a one and one coming up for Hurley Johnson. Johnson's eight of 19 from the line this season. That's 42%, but the first is nothing but the bottom of the net. 17 point game. Second is good as well. 37-21. White moves left. Over to Jones at the top. Right wing to Jerry Jones. Well now low Soko. And a foul. Ovi Soko shooting one and one for Duquesne. Soko three of three from the line already, make it four of four. Duquesne now six of nine from the line. Mason out, right an hour in for Duquesne. Second shot is good. 39-21. Hildebrand left wing. The top to Farrell. Farrell into the lane. Puts it up and in. 39-23. 4 15 to go in the first. Baseline, Soko. He's got 16 now. Leads all scorers. And Duquesne's got 41. Leathers left wing for three. Got it. Justin Leathers from downtown brings the Bronx within 15. Miss from Soko, a rebound Bronx. See if they can string together a few baskets. Hildebrand, right wing, deep three, got it! Christian Hildebrand, back-to-back -back threes for the Bronx. UTPA within 12, timeout, Duquesne. The Dukes, he was up a 30 second timeout. Well, no lead is ever saved, not in basketball. It's a game of runs, and just as quickly as I mean, Duquesne pulled away. It was an 18 to two run. You can extend that into a, a 24 to six run if you so choose. No matter how you slice it, Duquesne went up 39, 21. They were up 18 points. But now they're up 12. A couple of threes will do that for you. And now if the Bronx can get another stop and another basket, they'll be within single figures. Well, another three anyway. Bronx from behind the arc today are five for 10. That's nothing to sneeze at. Of course, Hines is two for three. He's on the bench with two fouls. Another three-point play opportunity coming up for Duquesne. Soko is an incredibly difficult man to guard. And we hit a media timeout. 43-29 Duquesne with three minutes to go in the first. You're watching Bronx Basketball.
This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the Big Dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. You know, at the break, a uh, young man got to do the Rio Bank shooting contest. If you hit a layup, you win $10, and then you can keep it, or you can risk it by going for $25, hitting a free throw, and then he was successful on both of those. So he risked that, went for a three-pointer for $250, hit the three, then he could risk that, keep it, or risk it all for $1,000 with a half-court shot. He walked away <laughs> with his $250, courtesy of Real Bank. Congratulations to him. That's awesome. Christian Hildebrandt goes for three from the right corner and misses. Rebound Duquesne. It's 44-29 Dukes after the good three-point play. And Duquesne's retaining with 2.39 to go. Right now we're with the ball right in front of us. Goes over to the left wing. Vaughn for three. Or try that white for three, and he hits it. It's 47 to 29, Duquesne. The Bronx had gone within 12. Duquesne with an old with a three-point play and then a three-pointer. Gets back up 18. It's 47-29 with 2.25 to go. Coach Hipscher calls for a 30-second timeout. The second timeout he's used. First one that will affect him in the second half. See some of the crowd today. It's Windsor Texan Appreciation Night here at the UTPA Fieldhouse. And of course, we're always happy to see the band here on winter break. Leaders and Blazers here as well, and they always add to the atmosphere. Back to action with the Bronx. Tipped out of bounds off to Kane. Remains Bronx ball. Hildebrand to McIntosh right wing. Left wing to Ivan in. Corner Hildebrand. Skips it out towards Farrell on the right wing. McIntosh at the top. Left wing to Ivanen. Five on the shot clock. To Farrell at the top with three, two, one. Forces it up. Rims out, but an offensive board by Hildebrand. This pass gets batted out of bounds. Off to Kane, so the Bronx will get a possession with 33 on the shot clock. Majewski is all alone. Three from the top. Knocks it down. 47-23. Or 47-32, I should say. That's a difference. Minute and a half to go in the first. A lot of basketball left to be played. Jones, right wing white. White pulls up from the top, doesn't go. Rebound Hildebrand. Here come the Bronx. Farrell, 60 seconds left. McIntosh along the baseline, throws it up, and it. 47-34. Let's see if the Bronx can go on a little run before the half. 
That's the key. It's just momentum. Get yourself going in the right direction going into the half. Give yourself a chance to complete the comeback. Good defense there. Forces an almost Aaron pass. Jones holds on and is able to pass it over to the left wing to Ridenauer. Back to Jones at the top. Comes inside to Watkins. A little pull up. Goes. 49-34. It's a 15 point game. Shot clock's off. Bronx can hold out for the last basket of the half. Farrell dribbles it out on top of the Bucking Bronc at center court. With 12, 11, 10, 9 to McIntosh, back to Farrell. Farrell comes in, picks up his dribble, goes to Cleveland down low with four. Back out to Farrell, right wing for three. Too strong, rebound to Kane, and there's the buzzer. We go into the half. And the score is 49-34. Well, Bronx trailed by as many as 18. They were tied, but never led. Now with 15 going into the half. Duquesne had their run. It was a 24 to six run. And we'll see if the Bronx can counter punch in the second half. Duquesne, by the way, scored the final six points of the half. We're going to take a timeout. Coming up on the halftime report, take a look at your first half stats. We'll show you a clip from this week's episode of Rock Country. And then, if we have time, we'll take a look around the WAC. You're watching Rock's Basketball. Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim your Red Tax cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best. Back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. Scored the half. 49-34 Duquesne. When you're watching is our one of our halftime games. We have a bunch of little kids out there trying to pop balloons. And whoever can pop his allotment first wins. And I think it's this kid in the orange shirt we're looking at here. He only that's his last balloon. The kid on the other side of the court has three to go. There we go. There's a winner. I think he either wins a WAC t-shirt uh, or a, a women's soccer t-shirt or a WAC water bottle. I didn't hear what the prize was for this game, but those are among the different prizes that they give out in the games here at the Fieldhouse, so it might be one of them. Anywho, 
Let's take a look at some of those first half statistics. We'll start with visiting Duquesne. Leading all scorers with 19 points. Ovi Soko on six of nine shooting. One for two from behind the arc, six of six from the line, two boards, two steals. Everybody else in single figures. Micah Mason with nine points. Five points for Derek Coulter. Four points, six boards, Jeremiah Jones. Four points, Trevon White. And then two points each for Dominique McCoy, Jerry Jones, Isaiah Watkins, and Desmond Rinenauer. The Dukes, 18 of 35 from the field, that's 51.5%. 5 of 13 from behind the arc, 39%. And 8 for 11 from the line, that's 73%. 19 board, 6 offensive compared to 15 and 2 by the Bronx. Bronx land scoring by Shaq Kynes, he's got 12 points, 5 of 9 shooting, 2 for 3 from behind the arc with 2 rebounds. Everybody else in single figures, 7 points, 4 assists, 2 steals, 2 blocks, 2 boards, Javon Farrell. Three points, four boards, Justin Leathers. Three points, Alex Majewski. Three points, three boards, Christian Hildebrand. Two points, Hurley Johnson. Two points, LJ McIntosh. Two points, Lori Toivonen. The Bronx, 13 of 26 from the field. That's 50%, a six of 14 from behind the arc, that's 43%, and two of five from the line. Points in the paint, Duquesne 20, Bronx eight. Off of turnovers, Duquesne 13, Bronx three. Second chance points, seven for Duquesne, three for the Bronx. Fast break points, 12 for Duquesne, two for the Bronx. Each team's had 10 points off the bench. Hasn't been a lead change, there's been just one tie. Give you all these numbers, but the only ones that matter 49-34, Duquesne leads the Bronx at the half. Well, this week on Bronx Country, we let you meet Rafael Alvarez, who is the head manager of the men's basketball team. And we're going to show you a clip. It, the entire show is about him, and you're going to see why in a minute. And obviously, we don't have time to show you the whole show, but... After we're done showing you what we have time to show you, we hope that you'll head online to utpabronx.com after this game is complete, of course, and watch the rest of Bronx Country. This is Bronx Country. Welcome to Braun Country. I'm Jonah Goldberg. When people think of how a basketball team works, they often think of the coaches and the players and sometimes the trainers and the administrators. But behind the scenes, making a lot of things happen, are the student managers. The head manager of the UTPA men's basketball team is Rafael Alvarez, and that, in and of itself, is a Christmas miracle. Romeo Villarreal has the story. In spring of 2014, Rafael Alvarez will become the first member of his family to graduate from college. Ralph is currently doing work study as the head equipment manager for the UTPA men's basketball team. And early on in his college career, it became quickly apparent that Ralph was meant to lead. I got introduced to Pan Am, obviously through orientation, but really, Bronk, uh, what's it called? At, at that time, it was called Bronk Camp, or freshman camp and where we got a mentor, where we got into the school, did a little fun activities. That was before Bronc Ground had existed. And um, I remember the ambassadors program existed, existed back then. And I got a mentor through there and he, he showed me around. He did a great job with me. And, and through Bronc Camp, I, I became more social, more open-minded, more active, definitely more uh, daring to be, you know, to stand out and and to be part of, of of stuff like organizations. Since then, I I progressed. I was in leadership academy. Since then, I was I went to leadership institute. And my freshman year, I was like a one or two freshmen. Um, you know, I went to a lot of leadership 
uh, organizations my freshman year, my sophomore year. In just a short period of time, Ralph has grown very close with the men's basketball team and believes they have what it takes to do big things this season and every other season after. This, this team really has a different feel. I mean, I wouldn't know about other teams in the past. This team, is the locker room is very united. And then you can tell that this coach, this new coach and this new coaching staff is big time and they're very serious about winning. So, and you can tell by how they coach and how serious they take their job and how well they take care of their players. And that carries on from the coaches to the players and to the staff, like they work around them. So it's fun. I mean, I'm friends with all of them. They, they treat me right and make me part of, their, of the team. And it's been an experience so far. While today Ralph has settled down here at UTPA, Things weren't always so easy for him. He faced a long series of challenges just to get here and to make it where he is today. The first of which happened when he was only five years old. I remember so vividly that, you know, the river was streaming, it was fast rapids. It was up to like maybe his chest or his, his stomach. And then he pulled out a big tractor tube and he inflated it, and then my mom got on. And then it was my mom and my mom's womb. She was like six months pregnant. And then it was myself on top or to the side, I don't remember. And there was this dude, this coyote, just, just pushing it, just through the rapid speed. It was very slow, but we got there. He got there slowly. Then he just inflated it and hit it, and we took off. It was that, that one part. I mean, there was so much to it, but that one part I remember it so vividly. My mom even said I got mad because I didn't get to get wet. Because, you know, I'm a little kid trying to get wet, but I didn't know what was going on. But what was really going on is me leaving home, going to another new, new home, new, new everything. Ralph was soon enrolled in school and learned English very fast. He was quickly placed in advanced courses by his teachers who saw a lot of potential in him. I was in a bilingual class that first year and then by my second grade I was put in a GT program. I was put in an all English class already. So from then I mean I picked it up real quick. I remember loving school. Like I remember like enrolling myself in summer school. Just cause like, you know, I didn't, there's not a lot to do at home. We live with like farm animals and there's not, uh, not a lot to do. So I, I went, I liked school. I, I remember elementary middle school. I liked school that much that I didn't miss. And I just, I went, I went to go even though it was summer school. Like I appreciated it. That was like a privilege. Cause I, we had, we had nice things. We had food, we had, you know, air conditioning, all that stuff. Ralph was, is, it was a, is a humble student. You know, he was one of my humble students. He was very well-mannered, you know, uh, good family values and uh, very studious, always wanted to know what was going on and he always doing his work on time. You never heard anyone talk bad about him. His teachers loved him. He was a very good student, so he, uh, he stood out. Roxanne Garza is the college advisor for Rio Grande City High School. She was one of the people that showed both Ralph and his parents that college was still a possibility even though Ralph was undocumented. Well, a lot of those students are reluctant, like they don't think they can go to school because of course uh, a lot of them are reluctant because of immigration. They think that the Border Patrol will get involved uh, when they're doing their financial aid, when you have to ask, ask for documents for verification and stuff like that, and when you do the affidavit. And then a lot, a lot of them, of course, the money, you know, how they're going to pay for school. So they only, they only qualify for state aid, not government aid. But Ralph would come into my office. Uh, of course, he was an excellent student. He would take AP classes. He was doing the DAV program and all that. And uh, just in talking to him, you know, telling him, what are your plans? What do you plan on doing? And he was kind of reluctant at the beginning. But, you know, we told, I told him about the different options that were available to him. And he applied to Pan Am. Pan Am was his first choice. And we did all the paperwork spoke to the parents, the parents would come in regularly to meet with me and, you know, trying to convince them, you know, he has to do this, give him a, give him a chance, he, he's able to go to school, not to be afraid, you know, because that, that, that's, the parents are very reluctant, 
you know, but then talking to him and then they came over all the time and, you know, just in conversation, they were, they, they, they grew to the idea that he could go to school. From what you, and you, if you're in my situation where you don't have papers or social security or anything, you really look forward to one day getting married. That was like the end cause. You you work you work, um, but you you just want to get married at one point very soon, and then from then you can legitimately work with a social. Because through marriage you could fix your papers. But um, and at one point I was gonna I was gonna accept that, but it wasn't until like the semester before and it ended, which is in my senior year. My counselor really pushed me to apply to financial aid and to colleges and. I really didn't know why, but I did trust her, so I did it anyway. And when I got accepted to UTPA and got awarded some money, not all of it, not a lot, because I'm limited to the funds, but nonetheless some, then it became a possibility. Then me and my parents collected resources to really try to make that happen. So. It was until after graduation where it was becoming more of a reality that I was going to go to college, to Pan Am. And, I, and here I am. And of course you can get Brown Country every week. Every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel throughout the state of Texas. And every Friday at 11 a.m. on Comcast Sportsnet Houston. Throughout the week at McAllen Cable Network, FAR Television, 956sports.com, and the UTPA Bronx, or UTPA Athletics YouTube channel. Start of the second half, Bronx down 49-34. To Duquesne. Duquesne with the ball, moving right to left. And a quick three from the right wing. Doesn't go for Coulter and a rebound Bronx. Bronx not using their starting lineup out of the gate here. One change as Jacob Popovich is out there instead of Hurley Johnson. McCoy picks up his third foul for Duquesne. Bronx ball with Popovich. Goes with the layup, it doesn't fall, and the rebound's tipped out of bounds. Hits Duquesne ball. You don't see Raspopovich attempt many shots. That was just his second of the season. Of course, he's played limited minutes. Farrell comes inside, layup, good in the foul! Russ Popovich is a senior at Maryville High School in Indiana. All conference, all area, all state. One of the teams of the Indiana State Regional Playoffs is a junior averaging 11 points, seven assists, three and a half rebounds, three steals. AAU, he averaged 12 points, 11 assists, five boards, three steals, a junior as well. Farrell converts on a three point play, Bronx within 12. Coulter, foul on the floor. Justin Leathers just picked up his fourth foul. Oh, I didn't realize he had gotten that many already. three for Mason, that's his third three. He also has the three point play. Josh Cleveland just picked up his third foul. Now it's Coulter with the ball at the top. 
Pass to McCoy on the right wing. Back to Coulter. Left wing, Soko. Goes inside. He walks to the rim and misses on the shot. Gets his own rebound. Puts it up and in. And it's 54-37. Hines throws it up. No good, but a foul. Are they calling that offensive? Coach Hipster disagrees, and he lets the officials know as much. Cleveland and Leathers in foul trouble takes a seat as Jamal Dantzler, that's the first appearance of the game, and Laurie Toyman is in as well. Yep, Dantzler's first appearance. Shot no good for Mason, rebound Bronx versus Popovich off to the races. Goes it to Dantzler, lays it up, and in. 4-39, two and a half minutes gone by in the second. Mason on the left wing, Farrell out to meet him. Carter matched up with Spopovich, or Coulter, I should say. Miss on the shot, rebound Dantzler. The Hines, the cutter, throws it up, doesn't fall. Rebound Toyvan in underneath, has to give it back to Hines, tries the baseline jumper, and that goes in. Bronx within 13. Coulter. So 56-41. Hines thought about it, takes a step in, goes with the long two instead, and banks it in. Hines picking up right where he left off in the first. He's got 16. Coulter misses. Toivon in rebounds. Farrell racing his way in. His shot is swatted away by Soko. Here comes Duquesne. Mason alone for three left wing, and he nails it. It was just Mason and Toivonen back there, so Toivonen was waiting near the basket to avoid a blow by, and Mason just said, okay, well, I've got space. It's his fourth three of the game. Dantzler gets fouled. He'll head to the line for two when we return. 15-41 to play in the second half. The Bronx down 59-43. You're watching Bronx Basketball. Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital at Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. It's the Red Tax Sales event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim 
your Red Tag Cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tag Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best. Back at the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jamal Dantzler at the line for two. Hits on the first. Bronx are now three of six from the line today. Dantzler this season is now nine of 21, making 10 for 22. And the Bronx within 14. Light with the ball up the top, comes in, throws it up off the window and in. 61-45. Hines tries to go over the shot, it's blocked. But that was Gill, but stolen right back. Farrell leaves it for Toivin in, back to Farrell. Upside, Dantzler, the jumper, doesn't go, rebound, Soko. Mason thought about it. Farrell got in the way just in time. Jones throws it up. Good in the foul. There's pop of, or they're calling an offensive foul on Jeremiah Jones. 14.47 to play. Two on Jones. Christian Hildebrand and Jacob Popovich out. Jerry Jones replaces Jeremiah Jones for Duquesne. Dantzler feeds Hines back to Dantzler on the left wing. Top to Farrell. Moves to his right. Swing Hildebrandt. Down low to Hines. Hines has his pocket picked and a foul. Jerry Jones picks up his first foul. It's five on Duquesne already. Got a foul per minute. Dantzler's pass knocked away by Soko and out of bounds. Soko's pumped up. Slams his hands together and screams, come on. Dantzler inbound from directly in front of the Bronx bench. It's the Farrell. Comes along to the right. Gets stopped at the baseline. Turns around, feeds Dantzler to Hildebrand in the left corner, Hines. Hines tries to come in, throws it up off the window and in. 18 point Shaq Hines, he ties his career high. White from the top, misses on the three. Hines gets the rebound. This is fourth. Farrell gives it to Hines on the left wing. Back to Farrell at the top. Bounce pass, Hines right corner for the three. No good, rebound Toivin in and gets fouled as he tries to hold on to the ball. Soko with two fouls now. It's six on Duquesne already. Hildebrand gets the inbound. Stops at the foul line. Just the dancer on the right wing. 
29 on the shot clock to Hildebrand. Lobs in for Toivinen. Toivinen into lane, throws it up off the bottom of the backboard. Rebound pulled in by Gill. Farrell trying to pull off a steal. Instead, he swats away right an hour shot into the, <laughs> right over to the fans who are sitting in the couch courtesy of Lax along the baseline. Duquesne retains with 26 on the shot clock. Mounts to Jerry Jones, left wing. Ryan Hour comes in, throws it up, bounces in. And it's 63-47, Duquesne. Farrell, over to Hines. Dantzler now, along the baseline, throws it up. Offensive foul. Shot no good, a rebound by Toivinen. Farrell, head for Hines. And a foul, 12 minutes even left on the clock. Soko called for his third foul. And he gets called for a technical foul as well. So Javon Farrell to the line to take the technical free throws. One of one from the line today. And then the first one rims out. Farrell second on the Bronx and scoring with 10 points today. Also has three blocks, three steals, four assists, two boards. Doing a little of everything. This is on them both. Farrell, 72% free throw shooter entering the game, but Bronx do retain with Hines going to the line. And Hines first hits off the back iron. Hines now 0 for 4 from the line. Bronx as a team are 5 for 11. Second shot off the back iron. And a rebound by Duquesne. Right an hour. This ball poked by Farrell. Pass over to Jones. Moves to his right. Comes to the corner, and now back out to Jones. Up to the top, stolen by Farrell. Coming to the races, one on, two to the basket. Lay up, no good. Hildebrand taps the rebound, can't hold on. Heads towards the Bronx bench, where it's bounced into the hands of Hines, who feeds Farrell to the right wing. Hildebrand up top to Toivinen. On the right wing, Farrell, he's open for three. Got it! It's a 13-point game, 63-50 Duquesne. 11.15 to go, still plenty of time. Jones gives it down low, Watkins hits the basket. That's a 15 point game, 65-50. Oh, Hines for three right wing, got it! Jack Hines from downtown. The Hunks are hitting their threes today, to say the least. 
They're eight of 17, that's 47%. After going six of 14 in the first half, two of three here in the second half. Wonder if they'll start shooting more from downtown to try and get back into this one as Jones round it in. Look at that spin. It's a 14 point game. And then Duquesne shooting 48% for the game. Hines another three, this one off the side of the backboard. Here come the Dukes. And a foul. It might have been before the shot. Nope, it was on the shot, so free throws when we return. 10 away to play, Bronx down 14. You're watching Bronx Basketball. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the Big Dance. Be there to see who will go home. The big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. 10.08 to go in the Bronx Town 67.53. White at the line, shooting two. It's on the first. White now one, or rather two for three from the line today. Make it a six possession game if he hits the second one. Also make him the third Duke in double figures. Does both of those things. And it's a 16 point game. Derek Holter replaces Trayvon White. Josh Cleveland in, Shaq Hines out for the Bronx. Justin Leathers in, Laurie Toivin in out. Others playing with four fouls. Only McIntosh also out there with Jacob Raspovich and Alex Majewski. The Bronx turn it right over and Duquesne has control. Von Farrell back in, LJ McIntosh takes a seat. So Farrell got the timeout and then a one playoff, hard to keep him out. It's as hard as it is to keep Hines out, but Hines, you're also not only giving him rest, but managing his fouls, playing with three. 71-53 though. And just like that, Hines is back to the table. Leathers for three right wing, strong. A tie up on the rebound, possession arrow favors Duquesne. Or actually, no it doesn't, it favors UTPA. So Hines will inbound for the Bronx. Leathers takes a seat. And the officials are getting together. 
which gives both coaches a chance to drop an offense, drop a defense. And they're going to the replay. I'm guessing this is to see how much time is supposed to be on the clock. Let's see what else you could be replaying at this point. We have a shot of the, the replay area right now. Unfortunately, we can't see the video that they're actually looking at. And we can pretty much see what you see right now. Exactly. I mean, it's not much. So, you figure it's a clock issue. Both teams are out of their impromptu huddles. Clock hasn't changed. In fact, nothing has changed. One of the officials has gone over to give an explanation to the Duquesne coach. Well. Okay. <laughs> Let's play some ball. Comes out to the left wing to Farrell. Hines, right side for two. Got it! Shaq Hines is on fire today. 23 points. Five points besting his career high. And the Bronx within 16. Jones gets fouled. Alex Majewski picks up his first. That's six now. On the Bronx. First one doesn't go. Second one does. 72-55. Farrell comes in, kicks out to Russ Popovich right corner. No look for Cleveland. Miss a rebound. Toivonen, who put or Majewski rather, who puts it in. And the Bronx back within 15. Missed by Duquesne, and it's Bronx ball as the rebound goes out. Doris Popovich brings it up. Bronx still haven't gone on a run. Duquesne went on a big run in the first half. And pretty much since then, it's been back and forth. Before that, it was back and forth. So if the Bronx have a run in them, they can still get back in this. There's plenty of time left. It's they're gonna get a chance to score some points without the clock running. As Watkins commits his third foul, it's nine on Duquesne. Josh Cleveland headed to the line for the first time today. Six of 14 from the line this season. That's 43%. No good. Second shot is good. 72-58. Bronx within 14. Jones ends it up to Coulter. Eight minutes to go. Ball in the corner. Here's the jumper by Reidenauer. And it's a 16-point game.
Farrell across the timeline, out to the right wing, Majewski. Top of the key, Raspopovich. Swing Farrell. Puts it up, off the back iron, no. Fouls on the rebound. Isaiah Watkins. And Josh Cleveland called for fouls. And we had a media timeout, 7.34 to play. 74-58 Duquesne. You're watching Bronx Basketball. Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim your Red Tax cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. Seven and a half minutes left. It's 74, 58, Duquesne. Duquesne ball. Out there with Coulter, McCoy, Jerry Jones, Mason, and Ryan Hour. Bronx with Raspopovich, Farrell, Hines, Cleveland, and Majewski. Now well, Coulter is taking his time. Duquesne is deciding to make the clock their best friend, it appears. That's right wing to run an hour. Now out to the top to Coulter. Launches a three. No good. But they did run 35 seconds off that clock. Farrell straight to the hoop. Lays it in. 74-60. Jones at the top. And Farrell gets called for a hand check on Mason. His second. That's eight on the Bronx, a one-on-one -on -one coming up for Mason. Mason 0 for 1 from the line today. Kane's 11 for 15. Miss on the free throw. Rebound goes out of bounds off to Kane, Bronx ball. 14 point game. Spavovich picks up his dribble on the wrong side of half court. Pass ahead to Farrell. Now to Cleveland underneath. He's doubled out to the left wing. That's Majewski for three. Short. And the rebound to Cade. Right an hour. Misses. Majewski rebounds. Long pass ahead for Farrell. Into the lane. Goes off to Hines who lays it in. It's a four possession game. 74-62. And we get a timeout called by Duquesne. Extends to immediate timeout, so we'll step aside with six minutes left and the Bronx within 12.
This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. Back of the UTPA field now, John Goldberg riding with you. There's six minutes even left on the clock. Bronx are with a 12. And down as many as 18. They've been tied, never led. Hasn't been tied since it was 15-15. That's when Duquesne went on their run. Bronx needs to make up two points per minute is the way to look at it. Cleveland holds on to it. Gets it off to Majewski and the Bronx are able to get a timeout called before losing possession. That was a turnover waiting to happen, so a good timeout. 5.36 to play. And there'll be 29 on the shot clock. And the Bronx within 12. After this, the Bronx going right back on the road. Just for two, though, one trip. They go to Grand Canyon on Thursday to open up WAC play at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Central Time. And then on Saturday, the Bronx are at Texas A&M. We'll have that game for you right here on 956sports.com. It'll also be live on Fox Sports Southwest. So if you're in the Fox Sports Southwest footprint, Texas and some of the surrounding states, be able to tune that one in on your television. Farrell, right wing three, got it! So look now, the Bronx are within single figures with five and a half minutes to go. Need a stop. McCoy hands it off to White. White coming to the hoop as his shot knocked away by Hines. McCoy somehow retains without traveling. Moves it to the left. Keeps the dribble alive. With 10, 9. Now White travel, uh, drives rather to the lane. Misses twice and then it's tipped in on the third try by McCoy. And it's 76-65. Back in double figures. Bronx need another hoop. Farrell up top to Majewski for three. Bounces off the front iron. Rebound out of bounds off to Kane. Still Bronx ball. 4.45 to play. Ovisoko's back in for Duquesne. He has been a thorn in the Bronx side. The tune of 19 points, five boards, a block of two steals. Hines inbounds to Cleveland. Puts it up off the back iron. Tipped around. Comes back out to Cleveland. Finds his way to the lane. Misses again. This time the rebound underneath by Cleveland again. Misses on the third try. Tries to bounce out towards Popovich off his fingertips where it's picked up by Mason. And here comes Duquesne. Over to Soko. Throws it up with the right hand and in. 78-65. Hines at the top. Left wing Farrell for three. Nope. Rebound Duquesne. And Jones hits the layup, it's 80-65. Six straight for the Dukes. Farrell lays it in. There's no quit in this UTPA squad. Time not their friend though, 3.40 to go. And Duquesne can run off all sorts of clock with that 35 second shot clock. Coulter at center court. 16, 15, 14. Soko comes in, pass underneath. 
McCoy lays it in, and it's 82-67. It's a 15-point game again. Farrell, bouncer is Popovich. No look to Cleveland inside. Now the top to Farrell. Left wing, Majewski for three. Off the back iron. Rebound Duquesne with three minutes to go. And Coulter fouled on the way in. Free throws when we return. Three minutes to go. Bronx down 15. They're watching Bronx basketball. Here. We understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. It's the Red Tack Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim your Red Tack cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tack Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. Three minutes on the clock and the Bronx down 15. Holter at the line. He can make this a six possession game if he hits just one. And he does. Both good, 84-67. 17 point game with three minutes to go. First Popovich feeds Farrell left wing. Now to the top to Dantzler, right corner, Hines for three. Too strong. Rebound to Kane. When you think about what Hines and Farrell have done today, they've combined for 45 of the Bronx 67 points. Hines 25, Farrell 20. Coulter. Dumps it off for Soko. The four on the shot clock. There's the long two. No good. An offensive board, though. Two minutes left. 26 on the shot clock. Duquesne in no hurry whatsoever, nor should they be. Five on the shot clock, and there's the layup, 86-67. Every time the Bronx have gotten close, Gaines just pushed them away. Bronx unable to go on a run of their own at any point in this game to answer to Kane's, what was it, a 24-6 run? Oh, 
steal by Hines. Going straight to the hoop and he slams it in. 86-69, Hines has 27 points. Most by a Bronc this season. 53 seconds left. Shot clock is off, so the Bronx are going to take what is most likely their final possession. Down 88 to 69. There's Popovich, swings it to Dantzler, left corner for I think a long two. Foot was on the line, no good. Rebound Duquesne. They get it across the timeline. And this game is over. This one belongs to the Dukes. An 88 to 69 victory for the Duquesne University Dukes over the UTPA Bronx. Well, I mean, like we said, there, there was one run. But that was the run that ultimately made the difference in this game for UTPA. Let's take a look at some of the final numbers. As we wait for Bronx Associate Head Coach Andy Hipscher to join us on the post-game show, we'll head back with the team to chat with the coaches first. We'll start with visiting Duquesne. So the Dukes had four players reach double figures in scoring, led by Soko. No surprise there. He had 21 points on 7 of 11, shooting one for two from behind the arc, six for six from the line, with six rebounds and assist a block and two steals. 14 for Mason, 4 5 from behind the arc, 5 of 8 overall, 5 rebounds, 2 assists. 11 points for Jeremiah Jones, 5 of 9 from the field, 9 rebounds, narrowly missing the double double, 3 assists. And 10 points for White, 3 of 9, shooting 1 of 3 from behind the arc, 3 for 4 from the line, with 4 rebounds and a steal. After that, it was 9 points for Coulter with 8 assists, 8 points for McCoy, 6 rebounds, 2 blocks. Six points for Reidenauer, five for Jerry Jones, and four for Watkins. Duquesne, 34 for 68 from the field. That is an even 50%. Five of or seven of 21 from behind the arc, 33%, and 13 for 18 from the line. That's 72%. On the other side of the ball, the Bronx led in scoring by Shaq Hines, 27 points. That is... A career high for Hines and also the most by any Bronc in a game this season. Twelve of twenty-two shooting for Hines, three of six from behind the arc, four rebounds and assist a block and two steals. Twenty points for Javon Farrell, eight of eighteen shooting, three of eight from behind the arc, one of three from the line, two boards, six assists, three blocks, four steals. Everybody else in single figures. Five points for Alex Majewski. Four points for Jamal Dantzler. Three points, five rebounds, Justin Leathers. Three points, Christian Hildebrandt. Two points, five rebounds, Laurie Toivonen. Two points for Hurley Johnson. Two for LJ McIntosh. One for Josh Cleveland. Bronx, 27 of 62 from the field. That is 44%. Nine of 25 from... Behind the arc, 36%, and 6 of 14 from the line, 43%. Bronx out rebounded 42, 33, and 13 to 9 on the offensive glass. Points in the paint, Duquesne 46, the Bronx 24 off of turnover, 17 to 15 in favor of Duquesne. Second chance points, 17, 10 in favor of Duquesne. Fast break points, 14, 12 in favor of Duquesne. We 
throw all the numbers in the world at you, but the only ones that matter, 88 to 69, Duquesne beats the Bronx at the Fieldhouse. Duquesne improves to six and five, the Bronx fall to four and 10. Well, we'll take a timeout coming up on Bronx post game, expected to be joined by Bronx associate head coach, Andy Hepshire. You're watching Bronx basketball. Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim your Red Tax cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Bronx country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines at UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference.
Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you where the Bronx fall by a final of 88 to 69 to the Duquesne Dukes. I don't think Coach Ipscher is coming out today, so we'll wrap things up from the Fieldhouse. The Bronx next game is on Thursday, 8 p.m. Central Time start when they visit Grand Canyon University, the first ever WAC game in program history. Uh, the Bronx will be looking for their first WAC win. And they take on a Grand Canyon team who is five and six entering today's action. They face Chattanooga later tonight. So they're undefeated at home currently this season. So that should certainly be an interesting matchup. That is on Thursday, 8 p.m. Central Time. And we'll have links to follow that up on utpabronx.com. The next Bronx men's basketball broadcast is on Saturday. I think it's at 3 o'clock, right? Yep. 3 o'clock start, so 2.45, 2.50-ish pregame. It's the Bronx visit Texas A&M. And we'll have that an audio stream for you here on 956sports.com. You can also watch it on your television at Fox Sports Southwest if you've got it. The next Bronx basketball broadcast in general is the women's WAC opener on Thursday. 7 o'clock start, 6.45 pregame, as the women's basketball team faces off against Grand Canyon, who on the women's side is, uh, I think they're 11-2 and two at last look with wins over... Hawaii and Nevada and a two-point loss to USC. So that should be a very interesting team to watch. That'll do it for us from the UTPA Fieldhouse. I'd like to thank everybody out there for tuning in. This has been a presentation of Bronx Basketball. For more information, you can log on to utpabronx.com if you would ever like to reach us. Send an email. Our contact information is up on the, on the website under Inside Athletics. Click on Staff Directory. But for now, for... Jim Bob sides back in the control room and the entire camera crew. This is Jonah Goldberg saying good day from the UTPA Fieldhouse. Bronx Fall, 88-69.